Alright, what's going on? It's Ghost of Evan back. If you remember the last video, we ended with the getting booted from the server. And what that does is it sucks. Especially if you're trying to do some kind of playthrough of the game. Because continue... Continue... What is, what's the word I'm thinking of? Continuality? No. Nah, I can't fucking think of the word. Anyway. When you get booted and you haven't gotten to a checkpoint, there's no save in this game. There's no quick save. It saves at checkpoints. I wasn't at a checkpoint yet, so I started all the way back at the beginning of the this dungeon here. Or this floor of the dungeon, which is pretty pretty big, remember. And um the and the random nature of the game means that the whole thing the it's like I have never been here before. The map, there's no map opened up, so I couldn't just make it back to where I was. Everything's random. So what I've done was I fought through some of this shit here, just to kind of continue on. Um, I didn't want to record the exact, you know, me going through it again from the beginning. So I kind of played a little bit, and I'm going to start recording here. And I actually found the doorway. Often I am sent to find them and punish them. How odd. In the order, they are just executed. <laughs> so, anyway. I'm trying to find the door. To continue on with our quest. And that blows. I hate when that shit happens. The, the, one pro the problem of having an always online thing. Um, I understand why they do it, but... The way that if you've been trying to play this game, the beginning of the of the launch of Diablo 3 has been really rough for the North American servers. Um, the first day there is tons of downtime um, of the servers crashing, trying to fix things. Um, it's pretty much stabilized, but it does happen still. And to be honest, I don't know if that um, crash I just had was actually them or was my own computer losing some sort of connection for some reason because it didn't kick me off it kicked me back to the main menu and I just hit resume and I went right back in instantly so I think it was probably something on my end but it still reset the whole damn dungeon and it's not bad because technically because you fight through it and gain more experience and try to get more items but it does kind of give you a fuck feeling you know because you're kind of redoing the shit you've already done. Um, so yeah, we're gonna head, I think the door is over here. There's some shit to fight down there though. Oh, a trap. Plus the other video was running pretty long. Uh, a lot. I wanna try to keep these around 20, if I can. But I do tend to make long videos and uh, kind of not pay attention. So that one I think was around 30. But there's a lot of game here, so it's hard to make like it's hard to make 10-minute videos of this and actually have it to me seem like it's even worth while because. Uh, you know, I don't know, by the time you kill a couple things, your video's done. So I like to make them a little longer, you know. Alright, so here's where we need to go. There's a chest over here. There we go, blue item. It's worth it. The Royal Crips. I think this is actually where the stupid freaking waypoint is in the beginning of this section. There it is. Damn, when we didn't make it that far. You know what? Is that waypoint already done for us? Ooh, level 10. Nice. Passive skill slot. So we got your passive skills is really where you change your character up a little bit. And you get yeah, you get two here to start with. There are forces arrayed against us that are stronger than we ever Alright, so let's take a look at this. Some greater purpose lies Oh, we're level 10, we get this new weapon too. But I so we know it. The gods keep their secrets close. Alright, so we're 17.78, and now we is 
26.67 DPS. Almost 10 DPS more equipped in this weapon. And then it has this 1% of damage dealt is converted to life bonus. But that's the vampiric part of it, which is awesome. And the starlight means it's an arcane damage. Suffixes and prefixes. See, so the starlight for this one is arcane damage as well. So we are going to whoop even more ass than we've been whooping, which is a good thing. Let me check this out. Because it usually when you run by these things, it pops up seeing you unlock the waypoint. Oh no, okay. I thought. I'm wondering if it saved once from other characters. It does not. Maybe just when we came down, it did it. Okay, well, let's keep going. Now we are even more badassery. Badass ish. Ish. That's even words. So you want to click on the sword and it gives a little cutscene. Keep your distance from him. This burden is mine to bear. May death bring peace from your madness, Leon. Traitors! Even in death, the armies of Condorus will still obey their king. Even if you will not. So we see a little a little bit of the past there. What's going on with this king? So here's I forgot to even go in here after getting it. So at 10, 20, and 30, you unlock a new passive skill. Excuse me. Slot. So you can have up to three once you hit 30. And as you see, you have all these to choose from. All the way up to 58. So, we get the first two unlocked here. At 13, you get this one, blah, and so on and so forth. So we get to choose one of these. So we got movement speed by 10%. Or damage you deal reduces enemy damage by 25%. Mm, yeah, that sounds better. Movement speed is okay, but every time I deal damage, the enemy I'm hitting does less damage for 2.5 seconds. That seems worthwhile to me. So we're going to resolve. That is nice. Meet your destiny. And we are, should be whooping even more ass with that being able to equip that weapon. Like I said, we went up 10 damage per second by equipping that weapon that we had sitting in our inventory. Good thing I remember it was in there, because I tend to forget shit like that. If I put something for later, I can forget to look. We have just arrived in Tristram, and I must say, I'm a bit dismayed. This place is a backwater filled with serfs and an ancient broken-down monastery. Hardly fit for the King of Condorus. I cannot fathom why Lazarus was so intent on this becoming our new seat of power. Well, Lazarus must have known something of the king. I do not understand how evil walks in the day. Should it not Not enough spirit. Light? Evil knows not day or night. But the light is both a literal and figurative foe of evil. Okay. Uh oh. You dare to bring the warmth of life into my tomb? We shall put you down, Hellspawn! <laughs> oh man, this dude's become even more badass! I love it. You gotta kill these pillars. That guy does like no damage. He's more of a <laughs> he's stabbing stabbing at that thing and it's just laughing at him. <laughs> but he's more of a guy to kinda draw some of the aggro away from you. That's his basic purpose. But you can't equip him with better stuff. But even when you equip him with better stuff, it seems like his DPS doesn't really go up that high. Um it goes up, but not anything crazy. So yeah. Do we have anything worthwhile to give him? We do get this axe. It's a one-hander. Okay, we'll give him that. So he's got the 7.2. This is 9.1. You see his DPS is only 1.4, though. So it's not like he does much damage. Um, it went up to 1.79. So it's... Yeah, he's kind of a pussy. 
The shield is better though. More armor for him. A good choice. And that's it. We don't have any rings or amulets to give him. And he's level eight actually. He's leveling up with you. Um but he doesn't stay it's not like when you level he levels. He still gets experience on his own. But you see at level ten you get to pick another skill for him. We're level ten, he's still gotta get there. But it doesn't seem like it takes him, you know, as long as it takes you to level. But it is not an, just an automatic level for him. I don't want the wrong in need to do that all the way around well. See if there's anything here. Alright. What we got down here? All these jars. There is an achievement in the game for breaking jars and shit. I can't Thank remember how much it's like, like 2,000. To contend with evil is the essence of what it means to be a Templar. It is a beginning. Balance is the end. And if you're playing by yourself, I actually recommend breaking a lot of these. Um, if you played a group online, people will just try to get through it, which is fine. Because you want to get to the bosses and get the good loot. That's the whole point. But, um... I do recommend breaking through a lot of some of this stuff because, like, right there, got a good sword. I don't know how good it is equip-wise, but it's it's worth. That's better than what he's got. So he goes up to 2.06. So it's worth breaking those. But you get money, and money's important in this game because um, I don't really buy stuff from the vendors. I have. But not too often. <clears throat> but for your, if you want to make your blacksmith, as you see, you, get, you need money. You need at least two thousand gold, at least ten thousand or eight thousand to get him up to level two, and it goes. It just keeps going higher and higher from there. The fetid, pallid malaise has fallen over the manor we now call home. Young Albrecht seems to be enjoying himself in our new home, however. Perhaps I am simply suffering from an imbalance of humors brought on by the recent change of clime. Okay. Um, but you do need money in this game. Now your money continues through all your characters, just like your stash does, and your blacksmith, so it all counts. But if I log in with my other guy, I'm going to have the same amount of gold with my other character. I've gotten a lot of gold, it's just that I spent a lot on the blacksmith. You so, will never defeat me! But said it's worth it, because, uh, see, I was able to outfit my monk with a few good items a few videos ago right off the bat. The moment you surrendered to madness. Because I had the blacksmith up. The blacksmith, right now, for my game, is as high up as he can be on normal mode. Um, you need to find blacksmith pages or something to level him up more. And I don't believe that you can find those in normal. So not until I get I beat the game spirit. can I actually level him up anymore. So at this moment, he's as high as he can be. So I wanted to get him there as quickly as I could. So I had knew that I could make everything I could possibly make at the moment for any characters I create. I don't have enough spirit. So anyways, break some of these up. Okay, that's good. Uh, the guy's right here. Is there a chest or something in here? I'm looking for chests. Chests you definitely want to open. Alright, so here's the Skelly King. This is where our first real basic boss fight of the game is going to be. Um, I'm wondering if I should change up my skills for this fight. Oh, I haven't ever even used this dash and strike. Shit. Keep my heal. You know, I'm gonna go back with my Fist of Thunder because this is more of a fight. You're just hitting him. I think he does bring out a few guys. What the fuck? I got this too. Oh, Jesus. When I get this? 15 spirit plus additional 10 spirit while channeling. Charge directly through your enemies, knocking them back and hobbling them slowly. Eh, I like the tail kick actually. For now, anyway. That's uh, pretty badass. Okay, let's get going. Hmm. 
What's up, Mad King? He deals some damage, there's no doubt about that. He does end up bringing out some boys here. But I could just frickin' spin kick these guys to nothing. Keep pounding on them. He got nothing on me. My heal's ready already. This is this monk is badass. Kicks ass and he's got a heal. I mean you get frickin' potions anyway, but that heal is pretty nice. Boom! And loot. And loot. The Zakarum High Priests in Karast proclaimed Leoric King of Kondurus many years ago. He ruled well until Diablo's influence drove him mad, and the loyal knight, Lach Danon, was forced to slay him. Afterward, Diablo himself raised Leoric from the dead as the Skeleton King, until the monarch's son, Aiden, vanquished him. There we go. That's kind of his story. Now we got a yellow rare item in here. We also got Gloves of the Hawk, which means those are going to be Dexterity. Slaughter, I'm not sure what that is, technically. And we got a lot of loot and a checkpoint, nice. Alright, let's see what we got. We got these gloves of the hawk, one dexterity, that's it. That's it, really? It does give us a damage bonus. Even though it does lower our magic find, I kind of like having some sort of magic find. But it's not that important. It's not as important early in the game, I don't think. So we'll get another little bit more damage there. Let's check and see what this thing does. It's rare. You right click it to identify it. It is. Gives us 50 more life, but takes away damage and protection. Interesting. So it's yellow, but it's really not that great for us. Vitality. Well, it regenerates one life per second. That's pretty nice. And it gives us better chance to find magical items, and it has thorns basically on it. Melee attackers take one damage per hit. Uh, it knocks our DPS down a little bit, but it does give us more life. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it anyway. Ooh, and I'm a book of bread now. Get out of the way, Templar. Cool. Change of pay, a little change of look. All right, so there's the Skelly King. He's gone. So we gotta enter, talk to the stranger in the desolate chamber. Basically, from the beginning, the the uh, they're talking about how the star fell down, uh, the crater, and made a crater. Um, this is where it landed in the cathedral. So we're this is actually the crater here. We get to go see what's going on with this thing. It was you that fell from the sky. I do not believe that you are behind the evil of this place. I am. I... I was. I... I remember falling. Who are you? I am not your enemy. I think. Yes, I... I believe I have come with a warning. The darkness. The darkness is coming. I must... I don't remember. I will take you to Cain. He will help. All right, let's go talk to Deckard. Back to do Tristram, and there will be a waypoint right here. The long road the gods set me upon has led here to the truth that the fallen star is a man. He knows nothing of who he is or where he came from. Perhaps Cain will know the truth. All right, we's back. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna check real quick. 
I don't want to keep missing them. Let's see if she has a new journal. No? Okay, I think she actually gets one. Maybe after we talk to them. You know, we found part the three last time. We missed part two. So we've gotten one and three so far. Let's talk to Kane. I found this man in the crater made by the fallen star. No man could survive such a thing. Who are you? What are you? A warrior, I think. I came bearing grave news, but I cannot remember. Your message might be all that can save us from impending doom. All right. Tell me everything you remember, stranger. Every detail. Falling. Fire. A sword of great power. It was part of me. But it shattered into three pieces as I fell. It is vital that we find those pieces. I believe the sword made whole will restore your memory. The goatmen are rampaging through the fields. Could the sword have anything to do with that? Of course, of course! Just as the dead rose around the stranger, the sword pieces drove the goatmen to madness. The goatmen are of little concern. I will bring back the sword. All right, go to the fields of misery. The Herodrim were powerful mages gathered together by the Archangel Tyriel to defeat the three prime evils, Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal. They devoted themselves fully to the destruction of the demon lords and left behind valuable tomes and teachings. How did you become the last of the Horodrim? My ancestor was the leader of the Horodrim, Jared Cain. When the Horodrim died out, their tomes stayed in my family. I was thrilled by tales of the Horodrim as a little boy, but it wasn't until I returned to them as an adult that I realized they contained deeper truths. If he's got a little thing above him, like a little asterisk, that means he has more to talk Tyriel about. Tyriel is the angel of justice. He has been helping mankind for generations, though he is forbidden to do so in any direct manner. Long ago, the high heavens and the burning hells made a pact as a result of the Sin War that they would not interfere in our world. The demons have broken this pact. Why does Tyriel do nothing? The Angiris Council, the archangels that lead heaven, almost destroyed our world once to keep the demons from spreading their corruption upon it. If Tyriel were to act directly, it would alert the Council to the demons' activities here and imperil us all. Alright, so he's got nothing more to say. The stranger. You have no other memories? Only that there were surges of light and... A kind of pain. How do you fare now? The emptiness gnaws at me. It is a constant frustration. Stay strong. The sword cannot be far. We yeah, don't got nothing to say. I hear you are going to the fields. It was a place of great beauty before the dirty Khazra fouled it with their presence. Kill some of them for me, will you? Happily. Happily, my man. Ooh, got another book here for Kane's room. Part three. Oh no, it's still okay. I guess he. I think he only has the two then. I'm pretty sure there should be one in here now for Leia. There it is. Part three. Part four. I can hardly believe it, XP. but the falling star is a man. When Uncle Deckard realized this, he was crushed. I know he was hoping for something more miraculous. So, so 700 XP isn't like a ridiculous amount, but everything helps. Plus, if you're in it for a story, it's nice to just see what they, everything that they got to say. Alright, so we're pretty much done here. Uh, we gotta go to the Fields of Misery to continue on with the quest. I'm probably gonna sell some shit and look, maybe plan on building some stuff. If I do build stuff. If I can, if it's worth it, I'll show that in the next video, what I get, or as I build it. But we're going to end the video here, actually, right now. So thanks for watching, everybody.
and uh, we got through our first kind of mini boss and we're continuing onwards so take care